So I was showing you this webhook system here that branches off into all these different API calls. And if we look inside here, what you're going to find is that we have a test URL and a production URL for this webhook. Now this is actually really smart because that way you have a different URL for testing and for production. It's actually a really smart thing, but the pain is if you hard code this test URL into your Airtable automations, when you go to activate this automation, it's no longer going to work because in order for the test URLs to work, you have to test the workflow. So when you go into production and you activate it, all of these scripts will need to be updated, which is just a major pain. And then if you were to go back to test mode, you'd have to come back into all of your automations and convert them back to the test URL, back and forth, back and forth as you were in testing and then in production. So what we did was to build this simple table here, which is a variables table where we put in the webhooks that are associated with the automations that we're using. In this case, we have the video actions. And then in this case, we have the segment actions. So what we did was, is we dropped in these two URLs right here, but we noticed the only real difference between the test and the production is this dash test. So we have this variable here called production equals true. And when it's true, whenever we use these URLs, we do a simple string replace and we pull out the test. So if I were to come back into one of these automations and check this little script here, you can see what we're doing here is we're grabbing the variables table here. We're bringing in all of the rows that are in our variables table. And then we look at that production variable. And if it's true, you can see what we're doing here is we're doing a quick string replace. We're taking that test and we're removing it. And then we're passing it along to the next scripts. So as this script runs, we can pass it the webhook. And this is going to be the test or the production webhook based off of this value here. So if I move this to false, then it won't do the string replace and it will call the test webhook. And then when I run the test workflow, it'll pass through and we can test things. And then when I need to go back to production, I can come back here and I can just move it back to true. And then it's going to start sending the webhook to our production URL when these automations are active. So there you go. Make sure to check out the No Code Architects community. I'd love to see you there. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.